That's good, y'all. So, we here, man. Um, I tried to do it the way I said I was going to do it, as far as, um, you know, y'all go on Twitter and y'all go ahead and, you know, vote or whatever. But y'all seem to just fuck around and put the shit in the comment section. So, it is what it is, man. By the time this upload, it'll be, you know, midnight. So, it'll be Monday. I got to keep it lit. The main two projects that y'all wanted was Lil Herb, which I'm going to review now. And I may do another one, but let's get into it, man. Lil Herb, um, Pistol P Project, um, dedicated to, I guess, one of his fallen partners or something like that. <clears throat> now, a lot of people say this is not like Welcome to Phaseo Land. I actually enjoyed it a little bit more. You know, and Fa Welcome to Phaseo Land was dope, but I didn't have no problem with this mixtape. You know what I'm saying? It came out of nowhere. It dropped on a, what, 26, I think. Um, yeah, man, it's just basically a dark tale of. A person from the inner city, you know, the hood, not one to give up, you know, um, basically his actions for what he's doing has a purpose. He's not just, wasn't in the streets for no reason, you know what I'm saying? He ain't rapping for just for no reason, just to be doing it as a hobby, you know, it's more about taking care of his family, himself, you know, his, his guys, you know what I mean? And, and basically showing people that this is the life that I'm living now, I'm leaving that other shit alone. That's at least what I got from it, you know what I mean? But of course, you know what? Drill rappers, Chirac rappers, you get the, you know, the, the street content, you know, gun violence, gang violence, you know what I'm saying, flexing, money, you know, all that good shit, you dig? So it's basically what you get out of this project, and I thought it was dope, you know, it came out of nowhere. Of course, we know he working on his project, um, Ball Like I'm Kobe, you dig what I'm saying? So that should be dropping sometime next year, but let's get into it. The first track, Pistol P, um, if you listen to it, clearly it got the news clip at the beginning of the record, I thought that was pretty dope. The beat is kind of dark, you know, violent lyrics, you know what I mean? I got a real vibe from it. Um, his flow is just crazy. It ain't no hook. He definitely spazzed on this, you know what I'm saying? Basically, I think it's song dedicated to his homie Pistol Pete. I'm not from Chirac, but you did. if you are, let me know if that's what the song was basically talking about. That's what I got from it. Um, number two, Where I Reside. Basically, a song about where you from, you know what I'm saying? What goes on in, in his neighborhood. And I think definitely, man, that's one of the more aggressive songs. His flow is aggressive. It's a street record, violent lyrics, you know. I thought the hook was crazy, just letting people know, like, where I come from, you know. It ain't no walk in the park, you feel me? So I definitely fuck with that record. Um, number three, Nothing At All. It's basically his story about coming up from nothing and wanting something, you know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't had nothing at all when he started out, you know. Basically, that's, I think, everybody's story, you know, that come from the inner city. Not everybody, but most people don't get it fucked up. You know, where you just grow up in that household with, you know, raised by either a single mother, your grandparents, or, you know, your parents on drugs, and you're basically grinding for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? You definitely get that from this record. I fuck with this record, man. Um, it's just his story, and I definitely feel like he gave a lot on this project. Number four, Quick and Easy. He spoke some real facts in this song, man. Like, the beat was crazy. I like how it switched it up, and it had a soulful sample to it. And the realism of his lyrics the in-depth look into it, I thought that was actually dope, you know, because it's like, he's not a lyrical person, but the way he could put words together, you definitely could feel like he know what the fuck he talking about, you know what I mean, he authentic, he 100, you dig? Jug House, basically a song about a trap spot, y'all already know what that's about, you know, if you indulge in those type of activities, I personally don't, you know what I'm saying, but I definitely know what goes on at a Jug House, you dig? So, I thought that was a dope record for the street, street niggas should love that. Um, <clears throat> kind of had an Atlanta vibe to it as well. Money featuring Katie Got Benz, they killed this track. I have nothing bad to say. Y'all, if y'all don't know, I'm a big fan of uh, Katie Got Benz. I love her ad-libs. I like how she flow. Like, to me, she rap damn near better than some of the uh, male artists from Chicago. I'm just keeping it a buck. But at the end of the day, they did their thing. Money, so that's what it's all about. You know, getting that bread, getting that sack, and keeping it moving. Um, Play It Smart, number three. I mean, my bad, number seven, I get that song three checks, bro. Like, that background sample was crazy. This song featuring Chase, uh, the melodic, jazzy-type beat, you know, it's just real, a real record, you know? And this definitely kind of threw me off in a good way because it's just like no matter what you do, you know, whether it's legal or illegally, but if you're doing legal shit, play it smart. No matter what you're doing, if it's a robbery, uh, gang banging, selling drugs, just make sure you play it smart. And I definitely feel like it had kind of a good message on here. I know that kind of sounds fucked up, but it kind of did if you really listen to the record and take it for what it's worth. <clears throat> Number eight is real. He basically spoke on Chirac, man. If you really listen to what he's saying, no hook, 
you know, honest lyrics. He spoke on a lot of different shit. You know, um, the sample was ill as fuck. You dig? I had no problem with that. I thought his bars was cool. He he throw a little bars in there. I thought that was great. But the honesty in his fucking lyrics it was just oh shit. You just gotta listen to what he's saying. You know, definitely, you know, dissing certain people. But I can't really say that he is. But it's definitely get that vibe of it though. Uh, number nine, Heaven to Hell. Um, I like the movie clip that he got in it. I like the um, the news clip towards the end of it. And it's Heaven to Hell in quotations, Shimaka featuring Zeus. I love they back and forth. I, I like everything about the record from the beat, the lyrics, the hook. All that shit was dope, man. But I definitely love that back and forth. It, it gave me a New York vibe. Um, and the last track, number 10, Four Minutes of Hell, part four. I've only heard the first two, but he killed this shit. What can I say? Like, Lil Herb definitely put in work on this project. A 10 all the way through, from the rating to the songs to the production. And I'm not just saying that because it's a project that I wanted to listen to. It wasn't a track on here that I skipped. I went all the way through it, listening to every song word for word, you know, and I was like, wow. I was impressed. I gave Gucci the same rating, not because that I felt like, okay, I just want to do this and get it out the way. Those projects are really fucking dope. Like, that Gucci Man project was fucking sick. You know what I'm saying? But this little Herb Pistol P project, y'all let me know what y'all think about it. Hope y'all enjoyed this review. Other than that, see y'all next year. One.